أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So we're going to start chapter 14 إن شاء الله and we'll talk about it a little bit and then we'll have the quiz and we'll continue and finish the chapter next week إن شاء الله. Chapter 14 is the third chapter in the series of the business cycles and it is about production cycle. The topics we're going to cover today, or not today, but in the entire chapter, uh, are activities performed in the production cycle, decisions and information needed for those cycles, rule of cost accounting. This is something extra. There is a course on cost accounting where you're going to learn the accounting part of it. Here, we're going to learn the information processing part of it where the information is collected and where the information is sent. And then, like other chapters, business cycles, we're going to discuss the threats and controls. And then there is something extra in the production cycle that is the quality control. Let's start. The production cycle, what is the production cycle? It is a set of recurring business activities and related data processing operations associated with the manufacturing of products. Now, recurring business activities, they happen again and again and again. So you buy the raw material, you make the finished goods, you sell them, and then you buy raw material again, and this continues. So this happens again and again. That's why it's called recurring. It reoccurs, and the production cycle is... Uh, the process of buying the raw material, making the finished goods, and then giving it over to the revenue cycle to sell them. Now, from your managerial accounting class, remember the inventory in the cost accounting process, there are three different stages of inventory. And you remind us, anybody remind us of the first stage what is the first type of inventory it's in, in the manufacturing process? What type of inventory it is? Do you, does anybody remember? Does raw material inventory sound familiar? It's the first, the first type of inventory, raw material inventory. What is the second stage of inventory? What is the second type of inventory? Can anyone remind us? Is anybody there? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Can you hear me? Working process. Direct labor is not inventory. Working process is the inventory which involves the accumulation of labor and material okay involves the accumulation of labor and material what is the third type of inventory this goods inventory very good so we have three types raw material work in process and we have finished goods three different types of inventory they go through the production process, the raw material enters and the finished goods, goods come out at the end. Okay? All right. Now, information that is received from other business cycles into the production cycle are, first, revenue cycle provides the production cycle with the customer orders and the forecasted sales. Revenue cycle's job is to take the customer orders, if you remember based on how many orders they're going to get or how many orders they have the production cycle manufactured goods so this information comes from the revenue cycle the sales customer orders as well as the forecasted sales the second type is ex the information comes from the expenditure cycle where the raw material availability and overhead costs uh, data is collected from now remember Expenditure cycle's job is to pay for goods and services. Among them, 
is the purchase of raw material. So expenditure cycle orders the raw material, it receives and st it stores the raw material. If you remember, we just studied that in the previous chapter. The production cycle, before it goes into production, it needs to know how much inventory is available. So let's say the production cycle is going to manufacture 100 cars. How many tires does the production cycle need to manufacture 100 cars? Anyone? How many tires are needed to, pro to, to produce 100 cars? 500. Very good, Omar. 500. Very good. 500, including the spare tire. Each car needs five tires. Four tires and one spare. So the production cycle is going to ask the expenditure cycle. They have 500 tires in the warehouse. Otherwise, they cannot produce the cars they need to produce. So this availability information comes from the expenditure cycle. Also, the expenditure cycle is responsible for paying all other bills, so the electricity bill, the payment for security services, all of these things are overhead costs. And the production cycle needs to know this from the expenditure cycle. So this information or this data comes from the expenditure cycle. And then the third set of information comes from the human resources or payroll cycle where the labor availability and the cost of labor is provided. Now, we haven't studied the human resources and payroll cycle. It's chapter 15. We're going to study it next, inshallah, after we finish this chapter. Human resources job is to hire and train and promote employees and so forth and, forth and pay them. So the payment data or if they're interviewing people to, to hire them, this information is available in the human resources and payroll cycle. So uh, the production cycle gets this information from the human resources cycle. So this is information or data coming from other cycles into the production cycle for their operations. Similarly, some data and information goes out other cycles from the production cycle. For example, the finished goods available for sale, this information is available at the production cycle. This is made available to the revenue cycle or this data is sent to the revenue cycle so that they can make the promises to the customers when the items will be delivered. So this data is going from the production cycle to the revenue cycle. Now, I'm going through this, this very simple um, data, but if you, the content is simple, so if you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'm going to continue and not stop and ask again and again, do you understand? Now, the second is the expenditure cycle. The raw material needs and use by the production cycle is sent to the expenditure cycle. So if they need more tires or if they need uh, more raw material, or they have used a particular raw material, this information uh, goes to the expenditure cycle from the production cycle so the expenditure cycle can go and order more. The human resources cycle gets the labor needs information from the production cycle. So if they're, they're going to have a large uh, production, they need more engineers and the human resources need to hire or advertise for engineers. This information comes from the production cycle so that the human resources cycle could go and get the labor, hire the people, interview the people so that they can be made available for the production cycle. And lastly, the general ledger and the reporting system gets the cost of goods manufactured information from the production cycle. So the direct labor, direct material, indirect labor, indirect material, and overhead. All these different categories of costs, they are collected. This data about these costs are collected from the production cycle as they make the items. This is gathered and it's sent to the general ledger, which is the accounting information system, the central system. If you remember uh, back in chapter two, when we discussed the five different business cycles, we had these five cycles in a circle. And in the middle of that circle, we had the general ledger and reporting system. This is the central accounting information system where the cost of goods sold data is sent. Okay, from the production cycle so that they can prepare the accounting reports and the financial statements. Now we come to 
the actual activities that are performed in the production cycle. The first is the product design. So before the product is manufactured, the first stage is to design the product. So before the iPhone is made or the laptop is made, the engineers spend many, many days, months maybe, in designing the product. And there's a lot of time and uh, resources spent in designing the product and then testing the product. Once the product is designed and tested, the company has to plan the production. And the production is planned based on forecasted sales and inventory levels. So how many uh, the company can sell in the next month, six months, one year, and how much inventory is already available in the market. So let's say you have a large inventory of iPhone, 10 and you're going to produce iPhone 11, if the iPhone 11 hits the market, automatically the price of iPhone 10 will go down. So you need to take that into consideration because it's not like your um, automobile models where every year you have a model, you know. This is, again, you have to desi design the product and wait until the right time before they go into production. So this is something they have to decide based on how much they can sell and what is the current inventory level. And then cost accounting, like we discussed, is a part of the production cycle where we have fixed costs, variable costs, direct, indirect labor and material and overhead. All of these items are accounted for. Now, this you learned in detail in your cost and managerial accounting class. If you haven't taken it, you'll take it. But there is an introduction to this information for every student in the managerial accounting class as well. All right? If you remember just a brief uh, summary, a fixed cost is a cost that is fixed. The total fixed cost is fixed, but the uh, unit fixed cost goes down as you produce more. Right. So if the rent is a thousand, it is fixed. It's the rent monthly rent is a thousand reals. It's fixed. If you make only two sandwiches, then the rent cost for each sandwich is five hundred. But if you make a thousand sandwiches, then the rent cost for each sandwich is just one real. So the fixed cost goes down per unit as you produce more units, but the total remains the same. On the other hand, variable cost is the same for every unit. So if it is costing you one real in bread to produce a, produce a sandwich, then every time you make a sandwich, it's one real for the bread, right? And if you make a thousand sandwiches, it will be a thousand reals. If you make a, make 500 sandwiches, it will be 500 real. The variable cost goes up and down. Total variable cost goes up and down with the production. But unit variable cost remains the same because it's one real for every sandwich. And then uh, the direct labor, if you remember, is anyone who physically produces the goods, anyone who physically touches the manufacturing of the, of the item is direct labor, physically touching the manufacturing. The supervisor is indirect labor. The security guard in the factory is indirect labor. The direct material is anything that you can easily identify in the product and it becomes a part of the product. So if I ask you to identify the keyboard or the screen or the camera, you can easily identify it as direct material. Indirect material can become part of the product, but you cannot easily identify it. For example, there is glue in your computer. If I were to ask you where is the glue, you cannot easily identify it. It's one type of indirect material, and there are other types as well. And then overhead is type of three. Components. The indirect labor is part of overhead. The indirect material is part of overhead. And then there is other overhead like rent, electricity, security, cleaning, or the free. So those are overhead costs. All right. So this is a brief summary, and you studied the details in the managerial accounting class. If you've taken cost accounting yet, you study it even more in more detail, inshallah, if you're an accounting major or minor. For our purposes, 
we know that these costs are accumulated in the production cycle. And then we have the production operations where it starts with material requisition. Material requisition is requesting the material from the warehouse. So the expenditure cycle's job is to order and receive and store the material in the warehouse. And it sits there. Before the production goes into operation, they request the raw material from the warehouse. So this process is called material requisition. And then the inventory is moved from the warehouse to the production facility. So these 500 tires that they need is moved from the warehouse to the production facility. And once it goes to the production facility, it's the responsibility of the manufacturing facility or the production site. They lose anything, if they damage anything, if something's stolen, it's the responsibility of the production cycle because it has it is no longer in the warehouse. And then once they receive the manufacturing process begins, right? They start to make the items. All right. That brings us to the last slide for today. That is, there are certain decisions that are made in the production process, in the production cycle, and they are, first is what mix of products should be produced. So this is a decision they have to make. Now, let's say in a factory you can produce 100 cars and you can produce either Toyota Camry or, or Land Cruiser, let's say. But you cannot produce more than 100, no matter how many you produce of each. So if you decide to produce 60 Camrys, Toyota Camrys, you can only produce 40 Land Cruisers. The total cannot exceed 100. Your capacity is 100. So you have to decide the mix. How many of the Toyota Camrys should, I, should be produced and how many Land Cruisers should be produced? And it depends on how many you can sell, which one is more profitable, what inventory levels you already have of finished goods, which one has a higher demand based on all of these and then you're going to dis discuss the uh, calculations of what i've just said the demand and the profitability and the inventory availability the calculation of these numbers you're going to do in detail in the cost and managerial accounting class but here you need to know that this decision is made in the production cycle then the next question is, how should the products be priced? So how much should you charge for your product? Again, this depends on what your competitors are charging. What is the demand for your product? Is this a new product that you're coming in with in the marketplace? So let's say a practical example. Land cruisers are more in demand in, in Qatar, and then the Nissan Patrol is more in demand in UAE. So you will find that Nissan Patrol offers good prices and free service and so forth in Qatar because they need to increase their sales here. La Land cruiser might do the same thing in UAE because Nissan Patrol is already in demand in UAE. So you know how they're priced. Uh, you need to decide how they should how the product should be priced based on the conditions you're in. Sometimes you go to the market and you see that a new brand of, sh of shoe is trying to enter the market and they're priced much lower than the existing brands, right? Because they're trying to enter the market. They might have a good quality product, but nobody knows the, the brand name. So they need to price it lower. And once the brand is established, they can raise their price to match the competitor's prices, etc. How should resources be allocated is the next question. The resources are limited. You have a, a limited number of machines. You have a limited number of engineers. You have a limited number of factory space. You cannot do as much of uh, everything you like. So you need to allocate your resources based on what is the maximum or best use of each. So if a non-engineer or a technician can do something, you don't want to send an engineer and uh, let him be occupied with something that can be done by somebody less than him. So you need to know the best use of your resources. And again, this is a huge uh, uh, set of decisions that you have to make. But this is a question that is asked in the production cycle. 
And then we have how should costs be managed and performance evaluated, right? How should costs be managed and performance evaluated? Then all of these costs that we have discussed, direct labor, indirect labor, direct material, indirect material, overhead, fixed variable costs, you know, just think about the number of items that goes into production, number of different types of raw material that goes into producing a land cruiser, the number of screws, the number of different types of items, and uh, the waste that can happen if you're not careful. So how should you manage the cost and how should you manage the inventory and cost accounting should be a part of the production cycle. It is a part of the production cycle, as well as the performance evaluation. So that you have engineers and you have technicians and you have laborers, and they're all involved in production. Now. Uh, some of them may perform better than the others. You want to know why that, why are some people able to do better than the others? And you need to be able to replicate the good performance so that other people can improve by following the better performers. And again, this is a huge task to uh, do performance evaluation and then uh, reward or hold back the reward based on the performance of employees. So again, this again is a part of the production cycle. Okay, so we will stop here inshallah and we'll continue more details in our next class on Sunday. Do you have any questions, number one, about what we discussed today and number two, on the project? The project is due on Thursday and I have received many questions and I tried to answer all of them. If you have any other questions, you can ask me now, or of course the email is open until you submit. Um, any questions for me about chapter 14 or the project? No questions? Okay, if we don't have any questions, password for the quiz is 5000. The quiz is going to be available at 4 p.m. in a couple of minutes, and you need to enter the quiz quickly because it will not be available. It will disappear in the middle of your exam if you don't enter it within the first two, three minutes. So you need to enter the quiz at 4 o'clock. As soon as you have it open, you need to enter it because it will disappear if you don't enter if, in the middle of your quiz if you don't start immediately. Okay? Any questions? So you can go to the content and be ready. The quiz password is 5000. All right. I will see you, inshallah, next Sunday. You don't have to stay here. You can leave and you can uh, do the quiz, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.